Okay, welcome back to What's Up Once with, with me, Otto Jacobson. Today I'm here at the Poster House uh, on Garrett Lane with Nas. Hi, Nas. Hello, Great to meet hi, you. Hi, Tyler. Nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you. So, Poster House, can you tell me a little bit about yourself, why you started the shop, and, and yeah, what your thoughts are about sure. it? Um, so my background is in teaching. So yeah. um, I worked at the local school in Tooting, mm -hmm. far from here. And um, I worked with children for most of my adult life. So I decided to qualify and become a teacher in 2011. So I carried on teaching at that school. And then at the same time, my husband also worked at the school. Mm -hmm. And um, at the same time, I was working part time at Poster House, which was owned by somebody else. You were working part time? Um, he was working he part time was... at the school and as a framer um... here. So obviously, you know, COVID happened and then he got made redundant mm. from um, the picture framing job. Around about the same time, the owner wanted to retire. So then he got back in touch and said, you know, would you like to buy the business? Yeah. So, um, you know, we jumped up the charts. We thought that was a quite nice opportunity of us. We did toy with the idea of whether it would be, you know, because of COVID, we were a bit nervous about it all. Mm. But So we thought about it for about three or four months. Uh, until finally making the decision that yes, this is you know something that we'd like to do and support the business and um, it's working here ever since. Okay, great. So that was in 2020. It, that was in 2021. 2021, yeah. so a bit yeah, uh, after just COVID. after COVID, yeah. And and your husband um, was obviously working here, you know, part time. Was that just a job for him, or was he kind of interested in framing? How did he um, get into? So his background is um, he's a qualified joiner. Yeah. So that's what he did when he left school. So that's what his job was. He was a qualified carpenter for quite a long time. That's what his trade is. And then he just fell in. Because when this shop opened, it used to be like, um, I think it was like a second-hand shop or something like that. And then when the picture frame was opened up, he inquired about a job here. And then he um, got the job here as a part-time framer, as well as working at the school. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So uh, he, he sort of went along that path. He was a carpenter. Yeah. and then Exactly. He... So he's in that field. It's almost natural to him. But to me, it's not. Yeah. It's like that's he, his, like, he puts like for me, together. this is not natural to me. Yeah. Mm. My background is teaching. So if mm. somebody said to me, "Oh, here, look after his children," I could do it easily. Mm. But this is something that I've had to learn. So you started during COVID, really. I mean, of course, you knew the business, but you started during COVID. And what was that like? People were spending like crazy on their homes, though. During COVID. exactly, exactly, it's a good point because what happened was. Um, at the time when it was COVID, they were um, serving through the window. So they were holding up frames and mount cards and serving through the window, right. which was, you know, quite difficult. And also over the phone and via email as well. So while we took over, it was, it was I think it was a tail end of COVID. We were just coming out of COVID. Mm. And then um, at that time, we became quite busy. We had about 100 jobs on our list because people were, like you said, doing up their homes, you know, uh, working from home. And what happened was they were up in their lofts. They'd yeah. find artwork that had been up there for years and then, you know, then they started to bring those pieces of art in. So we were really, really busy straight after COVID, which was really good for us. Mm. So it was a good start in a way, of it course. It was, yeah. Terrible situation know, abroad, exactly. but in a way a silver lining. But for us, it really was. Yeah. yeah. So has that changed now? Have you seen the uh, man yeah, slow down? You know, we, we did have a quiet period. So unfortunately, we used to have um, somebody who was working with us mm. and then we had to make a redundant because... We right. had quite a period and we didn't know how long it was going to last. We were quite uncertain about it. So what we, we did have to make a redundant. And then after a little while, we came out of that and then it, everything picked up again. So we're actually doing okay. Yeah. Doing okay. I mean, so, you know, with that, the downside is because it is just the two of us and because the shop is quite small, you know, we um, our turnaround isn't as quick as we'd like it to be. Right. Um, you know, sometimes it depends on the job. We're quite, you know, we're quite perfectionist in what we do. You know, want to get it right. We want the customer to be happy when they leave here. Yeah. So when we have a job, we'll, we'll ponder over it. We'll make sure that we've got the right materials. Does it look mm. good? If it doesn't, we'll get back to the, you know, client and say, look, what about this? What about this? How do, do you think this looks better? Yeah. And then, you know, that, that takes time as well. So I think that adds on to the current lead time that we have. And also, you know, with our supplies, sometimes things are not in stock. We have to mm. wait another couple of weeks. That slows us down. So yeah. we have all these um, obstacles sometimes. But um, that would be, you know, the downside of the business, I suppose. You know. Mm. Yeah. 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 And I mean, supply chain has certainly been an issue during COVID, especially and, and with the war as well. You know, um, yeah. that supplies. You know, everything that we have, it comes from abroad. You know, all the frames they come from Italy. So then, you know, we had the whole strike situation with the lorry drivers and things like that, and that all makes an impact. On our business, you know, it's all a knock-on effect. So yeah. sometimes we have things like that that happen. But apart from that, it's been quite good for us. So talking a little bit more about, you know, what, what people 
typically want when they come here. You know, this is a, a podcast about Wandsworth, about right. tooting. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned that people found sort of old artwork that they wanted to, you know, make use of, and maybe the frames weren't very good, or maybe they weren't framed. Is that sort of typically why people come here, or is there, um, you know, is there some? What's your best selling yeah. product? I guess, so it's funny because obviously, you know, we don't actually sell the product; we sell no. the service. Yeah. So um, what we were talking about at home was, I think, the mostly we'll have like people were bringing like artwork. So it will be either posters or a lot of people bring in a lot of things they've bought in museums. So mm. it'll be like A3 or A4 prints and um, we'll get quite a lot of those things. So we'll have the standard framing with the mount card and the frames. That's our bestseller. Yeah. Like it would be that. So they choose the frame and they choose the mount card. That would be our bestseller. And also we do quite a few st canvas stretching, canvas framing. That's quite popular at the moment as well. Um, not as many photos. Mostly it would be artwork from museums or things that people are bought in from abroad. So we always find that after a, like the holidays, so the half term or the summer holidays or Christmas holidays, people will bring in things that they bought mm, abroad, which is really, nice. really nice because it makes it so interesting for us. Yeah. Like, you know, we'll get things from Turkey, like Suzanne prints, <laughs> embroideries and things like yeah. that. But that's really nice for us because it, it makes it so much more interesting for us because, you know, instead of having you know, mundane prints all the time, it's nice to have like, interesting pieces yeah so what's the strangest thing that you've been asked to print the strangest thing or the most interesting i'd say it was wasn't so strange but it's interesting which was really really lovely i thought it was it was just absolutely nice fantastic this guy came in and he brought in a plaque of the place where he proposed to his girlfriend uh, in canada okay. That's nice. it was a plaque with the name of the beach it had a bot he had bought in a bottle with some of the sand from the beach and the cork from the champagne that they drank on the beach and we framed that put it in a really nice like box frame and that was really lovely i mm. thought that was really lovely so that was quite an interesting thing yeah i mean that's probably the most interesting you know we get quite a football shirts you know sign pieces we'll get um mainly things like that i mean a lot of um, pop art, you know, and then things that are... Um, oh, we had a nice uh, programme. I think it was written by um, Ronnie from the Rolling Stones. Um, I think he does the playlist. Mm -hmm. He'd written it out and somebody brought that in to be framed. That was really lovely. That was interesting because it's something different. You yeah. Know? I wonder if there's something you can learn about the area from what people decide to frame and you say not so many photos you know there are a lot of nice places in tooting green areas and so on that's um, right we get a lot of um prints like of the tooting back lido right um yeah. the market so I, I think there's somebody in the market that sells um prints of the local area so we get a lot of those um, yes. bought in to be framed which is really really nice and we have noticed people do like because a customer was asking us if we had prints of the local area which we haven't so that's something that we could look into so mm -hmm. that would be quite popular because um, people like to have things of their um, local, yeah. their like local art. Definitely. Yeah. And I guess um, one of the challenges for you might be, you know, people might question why they should spend X amount of pounds on, on framing something when they can go to Ikea and buy a frame exactly. themselves. Yeah. Whoa, what would you say to that? So our ethos is to preserve and protect the artwork. Yeah. This is set up by the Fine Art Guild, which we are members of. And the Fine Art Guild established a set of principles to ensure the best um, standards in framing. So there's four levels of framing. Mm. We frame to a level about two or three. Um, there's also a museum grade, which is highest protection, so that will probably preserve your artwork for about 30 years. Mm. Um, our lowest is something like you like you said, like IKEA standard, or if somebody was going to go to a real car and buy, some, buy a frame, that would be our lowest standard, which people could want if they didn't want to spend a lot of money, but that would be our lowest grade. Um, so that's like a grade one. Um, mm. But it's something that we don't really encourage because this is not what we set out to do as a you know bespoke framers we want to provide the best service and so what we do when someone comes in you know we try to explain that we are conservation framers and what we do is make sure that we preserve and protect the artwork that's mm. what we're really about so that's what we really want to um, promote and encourage so when the customers come in we really go through every element of the framing so we'll show them the backing the mount card you know we can cassette so which means that we tape it all around to protect it and then you know it's all sealed so you know things like um our specialty is really is the art glass so art glass um is uv protective and also anti-reflective as well so you know we encourage people to sometimes have that option mm. so that they can fully protect their artwork yeah yeah so you see them great you said this 30 years um, yeah, around 30 years, yeah. What's the, what's sort of level two and three, how much? So that would be, I think, quite a long time, I think. Maybe be 20, maybe more mm. than that. Okay. But the museum um, level would be, the card is different. So that is like really um, high quality 
basically what museums use. So that would be really high quality. And then you have museum level um, glass, which is more higher quality than the UV that we use. So yeah, so that's how it's yeah. observed, yeah. Yeah. But then should people come here and frame just sort of fine art or should they also come with, you know, cheaper prints and so on? Because um, the frame would add something to the overall exactly. piece, right? Exactly. Because, I mean, there's a reason why, you know, some people come in and they're like, okay, they're just coming for the aesthetic reasons. You know, they might be like, they just want it framed. They just want it up. It doesn't matter because they spent, what, £10 on something or £30 on something, but they don't want to spend more than £100 on something that, you know, that got quite cheaply. So it all depends. Sometimes it's sentimental value. It might not cost a lot, but it's sentimental. So then again, they're the ones that might want it preserved. So they will spend a lot of money or something that their child has made or something that they made at university, you know, those are the things that we get in. So, you know, we would never turn anybody away because of, you know, if, if they wanted a ready-made thing, we do say it would be probably cheaper to go to um, Ikea if you want a ready-made thing because yeah. even if they have a ready-made thing, that's still going to cost them money because we are charging for the labour. If you go to Ikea, they're not charging labour, they're just selling you the product. But for us, we have the added cost of labour. So that makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Um, so you've been, are you from Tooting now? So I have worked in Tooting most yeah. of my adult life, um, but we, we, we live in Wimbledon. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But originally I was um, born in East London. Okay. But you've been there a long time. So when you were at the school, how have you seen it sort of change since then? Oh, wow. Well, so I joined the school in 2000. So I was mm. at the school for 21 years. I went through three head teachers. Um, what's really nice is that I have got to know so many people in the community. I mean, you know, I can walk down the street and I'll see children that I have taught who are now in their 20s, which is absolutely beautiful to see. And I absolutely love that. You know, I'll get shouted at Miss Khan, you know, and that's really, really heartwarming. I really, really like that. And, um, you know, I've made so many friends. So, yeah, and I, I know a lot of people in the community, which is really, really nice. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a lot of people that come to the school who work in the market. They've got their own shops here in the community. A lot of them live. Um, yeah, okay. So you've been in the area for, yeah. for a long time. For a while, yeah, time. for a while. Do you think that there is something special about, you know, Southwest, Tooting, Wandsworth? And you live in Wimbledon, but it's it's pretty close by. It is, it is. I mean, 100%, I think Tooting is such a diverse community. And that's what I absolutely love about it. You know, I actually feel comfortable you know, in this community, um, you know, you only have to go and walk into the market or go down Tooting and you'll just see such uh, an array of different cultures. And I think that is, I think that's what's beautiful about Tooting, that everyone is living in harmony, you yeah. know, and I think that it's just like a big melting pot, isn't it, of different cultures and nationalities. And then I think that being here, it's, I think it's such a nice location because you get a bit of everyone in every walk of life, really. You know. So you used to be a teacher, now you run a, you know, a small business, an independent business. What have you taken from your teaching uh, career over into this? That's a really good question. It's a bit different. Um, yeah, very different. I think um, my organisation skills, yeah. because you know that's something that I learned to do in my teaching job. Um, also, my people skills, you know, being able to talk to customers. You know, um, it's really nice to find out the story behind what they've brought in. I love, you know, finding out about things like about their background and what they brought in and how they, you know, acquired it, especially when it's something interesting. Um, so I think that really helps a business because I think I find I'm the more chatty one than my husband, which is um, it's quite good. It's a nice balance. But I have had to learn a lot on the job. I'm not going to say it hasn't been a challenge. I've, I've really enjoyed learning all the different elements of framing. And before I came here, I had no idea that how complex it was. So that's been a really big learning curve for me. So my husband has the um, experience and expertise in the framing, and but I've been able to really um, find my way into what my position is in the business. So a lot of, some of the admin and also um, helping him out as well. So, mm. yeah. So you do some of the actual framing? Yes, I do, yeah. I, I can actually make a simple um, frame, A4 or A3 size. I can do all the cutting of the mount cards. I can cut glass. I can seal it. I can drill the holes in and put all the fixtures and fittings on. So, um, yeah, I've learned quite a lot. And so I've been here about two years now. I do feel that, I, you know, I'm getting better at it. But um, I have a lot to learn still. But I do sure. really enjoy it. And maybe picking up on some of those challenges from a you know small business operator perspective, what's some of the things that you think uh, maybe the council or some someone could do to help you in your running of your business? Um, so during COVID, we did get a, a bounce back loan, yeah. which helped us a lot, and which we're still paying back mm. um, when it was uh, when we were going through the challenges of COVID. But um, it's, it's hard to say really because we're already established. It's hard to say because, you know, like I was saying, it's like when we have 
quiet periods, it does pick up. So I think the challenges are more so as in our production. Or suppliers. Yeah, we've been able to get by without any outside help. Someone I was speaking to said it would be helpful if the council just had a portal where you could go as a business owner and have all your different permits and your taxes and whatnot that you need to pay. So maybe something like that could be just to help in the overall reduce. I mean, I think it would be great if we could have free parking. We could actually park our own car outside the shop. Okay. We'd have to pay X amount, thousand for the year. I think that's it's really expensive. Thinking that it is our business and sometimes we do need the car for our business. Mm. Um... I think that's hard. And also, you know, with the restrictions, there's quite a few restrictions around here. As also when customers do come in, they're always forever worried about their parking meter running out. Because sometimes they don't think that it's going to take a while, which it does. And sometimes they do worry about the parking. I think the parking's a bit too restricted. But, but I do understand the residents that live here, they want to be able to park outside their own house. But sure. Yeah, it has to as be a balance. Business, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it's a balance, you know. But um, I think residents don't have to pay, but we are here most of the day, you know, so almost like a resident, you know. So during the coronation, King's coronation, it was really lovely. The residents of Rogers Road invited us to their street party. It was so nice because it made us feel part of the community. Mm. And although we don't live on the road, they still invited us. And it was really nice to be part of that and celebrate with them. Yeah. And it goes back to that community point that does, people yeah. actually know each other. Now, is there anything else uh, that you were thinking about that you wanted to share? Yeah, I mean, um, so thinking about the business, it's it's almost, it's still a work in progress for us. Um, so basically, we would like to expand. We'd like to maybe acquire another branch. You know, we'd like to maybe sell artwork and posters here at the shop as well. But the thing is, we've got such a big time factor, you know, being just me and my husband. It's like, we don't have time to do that. So it is the business, we'd like to grow it more and expand and you know make it yeah and i guess the reason why you say that is because the demand is there people actually want to you know frame exactly. things exactly. and want to make their homes nicer which yeah. is which is good and you want to meet that demand and yeah. customers have said you know do you sell posters do you sell artwork and we always you know answers always no and you know i would like the answer to be yes someday you know and um yeah i mean that's i think that's a big drawback is space is having the space you know and also when we serving customers can I serve one customer at a time? Which I think is a good thing in a way because we want the customer to have that privacy, that private consultation without worrying someone else is going to come in and, and, and they're being rushed. When you come to get something framed, it's a big decision and you're spending a lot of money and you want to have that time to make the right decisions. So I think it's a good thing that we can only serve one customer at a time. So we always encourage appointments, which people forget you know, to do. But yeah, and yeah, I think because of the size of the shop, we don't have anyone anywhere for them to wait. So they end up waiting outside, which is a big drawback for us, which, you know, isn't very nice for them. But um, yeah. Yeah, the space is always mm. at a premium, yeah. I guess, yeah, in London. Exactly, but, exactly. But you do have a very nice it's space. Not bad. It's not bad at all. Yeah, it's nice double fronted uh, property with them. Um, We've got a back room where we cut glass and we make the frames. And we've got this section here where we actually assemble the frames and we have the front part where we serve the customers. So So everything happens here? Everything happens here, yeah. So Mm. we order everything in and then everything gets made here. Handmade, bespoke. (laughs) Brilliant. Good quality. (laughs) Well, I mean, I encourage everyone to come down here to the poster house. Thank you. On Garrett Lane and, you know, check it out. Maybe when when they do get here, you will have some tooting prints for sale framed already. Indeed, yes, hopefully in the future sometime. But yeah, we welcome everyone, you know, everyone from the community to come down. You know, sometimes we like to open up their minds to something that they never, you know, from the generic white or black frame. You know, we have so many different varieties here that, you know, it'd be nice to just um, come in and take a look, really. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Nas. Thank you very much, Otto. Nice to do this.